Hello and welcome everyone to the presentation on streaming data and visual data discovery and the impact that it is having on the Internet of Things. My name is Dan Potter. I'm the Vice President of Product Marketing at DataWatch. Uh, and I'm pleased to, uh, to present to you today and thank you for joining uh, today's session. Before I dive in, I just wanted to encourage you to ask questions uh, along the way. You can uh, go to the question uh, box, uh, type in your question. I'll try to answer some questions if I can in line during the presentation, but certainly at the end of the presentation we'll have time to, uh, to go through this. So the agenda today, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the Internet of Things landscape uh, with particular emphasis around industrial analytics. Uh, talk about why that is such an important area uh, of IoT. And then we'll talk specifically about the six requirements for the Internet of Things in visualizing and analyzing uh, information. Uh, and again, we'll leave plenty of time at the end for, for Q&A. So first, um, a little bit about DataWatch. Uh, we are a visual discovery vendor that really focuses on providing more meaningful and timely information uh, to organizations. We are a pioneer in real-time uh, visual data discovery, meaning that we can connect directly to data in motion and visualize data in motion. Uh, and we're also uh, unique in our ability to uh, prepare data for analysis. So a wide variety of different data, data sources supported. And we'll talk about the impact of both of those as it applies to, to IoT. Uh, we've been doing this for some time. Uh, we're not a startup organization. Um, we've got global operations, uh, an extensive customer base. And just to give you some context about where we come from, our visualization technology was born in the capital markets. So it was all about focused on uh, streaming data in motion and how can we handle large volumes of data, uh, present that uh, to users in a, in a compelling and meaningful way so that they can, again, gain insights uh, very quickly uh, in some of the most demanding use cases. Uh, so a lot of the, uh, the largest financial institutions around the globe are using our visualization technology today. Uh, we're also resold and embedded uh, by some of the leading vendors uh, in, in the space, including SAP, IBM, uh, TIBCO, who uses our visualization technology as the front end uh, to their stream-based solution, uh, and others. So this is who we are, but more importantly, let's talk about the, the Internet of Things. Um, this is a definition that I borrowed from our friends at Cisco. Um, the Internet of Things is really about a network of objects, um, all interconnected, all accessed through the Internet or through a network, um, and these, these objects, these things, contain embedded technology that enables them to interact uh, with, with the external environment, to collect meaningful information uh, and to interact uh, as part of a larger ecosystem. So that, that, that definition probably doesn't surprise anyone, but what I really want to do is I really want to focus in on uh, different, the two major segments of IoT both industrial and consumer, because they are very different. I think many times when people think of IoT, they think more about the consumer applications. You know, it may be a, a Fitbit collecting uh, information on your fitness tracking, uh, or, you know, Google's Nest uh, home automation strategy, or uh, smart appliances, the, the nebulous smart toaster, or you know, we're starting to see smart appliances like uh, refrigerators from, from LG and others, and, and even new uh, location-based consumer-oriented technologies like Apple's iBeacon. Uh, all of this is, is, is very important and very interesting, but it's the other side of IoT that really is going to have the transformative impact uh, to enterprises, and that's the industrial focus. Um, and the industrial side of IoT uh, is really a, about helping asset-intensive industries really make the most out of uh, this information that is, is today emitting from a wide variety of devices and sensors, uh, and even more and more um, with the, the prevalence of low-cost uh, sensors and other information, um, really having impact across uh, different sectors like energy with, uh, with digital oil fields. Uh, or healthcare, um, manufacturing, distribution. 
So this is where I'm going to spend most of, most of uh, the focus on because the requirements for industrial IoT uh, are much more stringent. Uh, this is mission critical. And, uh, and information and sensors have been around uh, in operational technology uh, for some time. Uh, but the landscape is, is quickly changing. The requirements are quickly changing. Uh, so I wanted to spend more time on industrial. Um, and to that end, I'm going to frame uh, this conversation around a, a group that, that DataWatch is a part of called the Industrial Internet Consortium. Uh, this is a, a group that was recently formed this year. Uh, its founding members include GE, Intel, Cisco, AT&T, and IBM. Uh, the goal of the consortium, it's not a standards body, but it's about finding ways to improve the integration of the physical and digital worlds with a focus on industrial internet applications. So here at DataWatch, we're very involved in uh, helping to define those architectural frameworks for interoperability, uh, test beds to prove out uh, these approaches, uh, and some of the thought leadership uh, activities that are required to help educate and evangelize the use of, uh, of IoT as it applies to industrial applications. Uh, just, a, just another slide or two from the consortium. You know, this is the year of the sensor. Uh, Gartner coined, <laughs> coined that earlier this year. And, you know, it's because of the, the low cost uh, ability to collect this information uh, and the number of things that are connected to the internet. Uh, everything, especially mobile devices uh, from a consumer perspective. But we've hit that inflection point. And the number of interconnected devices by the year 2020, uh, Gartner predicted to be uh, 200 billion. Uh, this number from the IIC uh, puts it out at, at over 50 billion uh, smart objects. And the rate of adoption uh, of, um, of smart objects and, and devices that are emitting important information is just exploding. So it comes a question of how do you harness all this great information? This is really big data information. Uh, how do you effectively harness it and what's the value uh, once you do? Uh, in the consortium, and we believe that uh, you know, across a wide variety, again, of asset-intensive industries, um, the, 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 the savings can be staggering by using this information uh, effectively and appropriately. A 1% savings in efficiency, uh, look at the impact that can have across different industries. $30 billion in aviation, $66 billion uh, in gas-powered fleets, uh, $63 billion improvements in, in health care. So again, the, the reason why, uh, one of the reasons why we're focused on, on the industrial side of IoT is that it can have a tremendous impact across a wide variety of organizations and industries. Um, so we're going to focus um, a little bit more on, on what this means from an industrial uh, perspective. And I'll, I'll share with you two slides from, uh, from the Gartner Group. Uh, earlier this year, uh, Rita Salam of the Gartner Group gave an excellent presentation at, at a Gartner uh, event where she talked about the impacts of industrial analytics. Uh, and this is really about big data. It's about uh, very large volumes of information um, emitted from, uh, from these sensors and emitted from uh, other information that you need to pull in. Uh, it may be uh, weather uh, data uh, as well as other sensor information. Uh, but the scale and the amount of information that is being emitted is huge. Uh, and this is, um, a lot of this information is time series information, which tends to grow very, very large. Um, the variety is, takes uh, many forms as well. It's both structured and unstructured. Uh, and, the, and the growth in the terms of the variety, the types of information people need to analyze and visualize is, is growing as well. And finally, uh, velocity. All of the IoT implementations that are having tremendous impact are all based on data in motion. So it's about delivering real-time streaming information so that organizations can make decisions faster and have greater impact. Um, and here's, a, here's an example, uh, in, you know, in the case of predicting the future of equipment, you know, predictive maintenance. Uh, time is important. The faster that an organization can understand those early signals uh, and can make decisions, the less expensive it becomes. 
So you know, time, uh, time is critical here, and that's why real-time infrastructures uh, are an essential part of, of an IoT uh, platform. If you kind of step back and look at what are the requirements in this platform, um, this is a, a slide that's derived from our friends at Informatica, uh, where in its simplest form, you've got sensor data uh, or things that are emitting information. These, again, this may be sensors, this may be log files, this may, may be third-party data. Uh, there's a wide variety of, of different elements and data that needs to be collected. Uh, then it needs to be transported in real time. So this is a, a real-time infrastructure uh, to move that information. Um, there is some stream processing that needs to happen along the way. Uh, this can uh, take the form of complex event processing engines or uh, new purpose-built IoT infrastructure to do the stream processing, things like aggregation uh, and filtering. Uh, the stream processing is, uh, is also making smart decisions based on business rules uh, around uh, alerting, providing real-time alerts. Um, so that data gets moved in real-time, it gets processed. Um, some of that data gets persisted into a data store. Uh, but what's really important here, and the, the thing that I'm going to spend the bulk of my presentation talking about, is how do I take this, this data in motion uh, and visualize and use that in a very powerful way. So having visual data discovery connect directly to this data in motion uh, so you can better understand exactly what's happening as it happens, uh, discover root cause uh, issues, make better decisions faster. Uh, this is what uh, is required from an end-to-end -end IoT platform. So I'm going to talk about six essential requirements as it relates to visualization and analysis of data coming from uh, an Internet of Things implementation. Again, this, uh, the, the focus is more on industrial, but this is the exact same kind of requirements uh, as it would for, uh, for a consumer-oriented IoT implementation. Uh, so the six include visual data discovery, handling streaming data in motion, how do you support time series data, uh, which, is, which is the bulk of, of a lot of the data that's coming from, uh, from these sensors, um, how do you handle predictive and advanced analytics, how do you handle the wide variety of complex and, and different file formats and structures coming from uh, a, a wide variety of different sources, and finally, real-time geospatial and location analytics. So these are the six essential requirements, and I'll, I'll walk through each one of them quickly. First is the paradigm of visual data discovery. This is something that uh, you know, has really transformed the traditional business intelligence world over the last five years. We're moving away from it having um, dedicated BI teams uh, owned and operated by, by IT, uh, modeling data, preparing uh, analysis and reports and dashboards uh, for users to a much more agile self-service uh, approach with visual data discovery that enables a user to very quickly attach to data, to uh, author uh, dashboards and analysis, to customize, to share that with others, and it's not just about uh, a static dashboard. It's about interactive exploration. It's about exploring the data, discovering new things, uh, doing it in a highly visual way, um, visually filtering results. It's about finding uh, anomalies and outliers in your data. Again, it's discovering the things that you didn't know and the questions that you didn't think to, to, to ask. This is what data discovery is all about. In the context of IoT, uh, these are very typically very large sets of data, time series oriented, uh, and as we, we saw from the architecture, and I'll explain more, in motion data sets as well. Uh, and to do this, you need a rich palette of visualizations to support both uh, static or historic data as well as time series data. So visual data discovery is, uh, is a very important component, and you need to be able to uh, connect your visual data discovery solution to a wide variety of different sources. Again, I'll talk more about data in motion and streaming technologies, but all of these different um, uh, repositories are going to come into play, or many of them will come into play uh, in, in, uh, in larger deployments. 
relational sources, uh, NoSQL and OLAP sources, uh, traditional data warehouse, uh, new Hadoop sources, even content that's locked away in content management systems. Uh, it may be important uh, information locked away, uh, and we've got a unique ability to extract that information and bring that into the mix. So you need to connect to a wide variety of different data sources. You need to be able to federate and join this information, and you need to be able to visualize this information. So that's the, the requirements from a visual data discovery perspective. Next, let's talk about visualizing data in motion. So again, the Internet of Things is really being powered by streaming data. And if you think about the evolution, uh, what's happening in, in, your, in your organization and most organizations, it's, it's not surprising that we're moving to streams. Um, it's all about providing faster speed, faster access, faster insights to information. So if you think about how your own uh, data infrastructure is evolving and continues to evolve, you know, moving from static databases to distributed or hybrid databases for faster analytics, moving to in-memory databases to provide speed of thought analytics. Well, streaming data and streaming analytics is really just the next natural evolution uh, to provide faster speed and faster insights to the business. If you think about how traditional BI works, uh, traditional BI, including some of the, the new data discovery solutions, they're really architected for data at rest uh, and issuing queries to data at rest. So they can ask a question, how is our business doing? Uh, they're totally dependent upon uh, the data being refreshed in the database, the data warehouse, or even the, the distributed hybrid databases. Um, the, the architecture and, and the approach is asking a question, making a query, and getting a response back. Well, in this new world of IoT, where, where time matters, where speed really matters, uh, with DataWatch, you're, you're directly connecting to that data in motion. So it's a continuous query. We're, we're looking for important events as they happen. And when they happen, you don't have to ask the question. Uh, you've got this continuous query on the back end, and it will tell you, hey, you have a problem. Send me an alert. When, when the following condition happens, let me know. This is an important business event. Um, if the pressure in a tank or the temperature exceeds a certain threshold, I need to know. And I need to uh, see that visually. I need to be alerted. Uh, in a visual way, then I need to, to begin to uncover why. Is this a, a real anomaly? Is this something I need to pay attention to? So then you go back to the data at rest. So you know if you see that the pressure in a tank has, has built to an, un, an unacceptable level, you can start to look at intraday data. All right, what has happened throughout the day? Uh, is this something that uh, that is expected? What happened last week, last month, last year? Uh, providing the, the full context to understand and make better decisions. But this fundamentally different approach to connect to streaming data directly and to be able to have this continuous query running in the backside uh, is a very, very different approach than traditional BI or traditional data discovery vendors. So how we do this? Again, connecting directly to the infrastructure that is providing this data in motion. Uh, it can be complex event processing engines, uh, we connect directly to our partners at IBM with Streams, our partners at Informatica with RulePoint and, and Tibco StreamBase. There's a whole host of emerging uh, cloud-based IoT platforms like Amazon Kinesis. There's also a message bus that provides that real-time transport, uh, Informatica Ultra Messaging, WebSphere MQ, uh, and a whole host of others. So you need to be able to connect your visual discovery directly to data in motion as well as handle data at rest. And again, to do this well, you need to have a purpose-built data model as part of your visual discovery tool. And it needs to be optimized both for caching streaming data as well as uh, going back to uh, data at rest. Uh, and with DataWatch, again, we were born in the capital markets where uh, the requirements were uh, sub-second response times to, uh, um, to information. So if you think about uh, in a trading floor, you know, being able to visualize uh, changes in, in, uh, in position based on changes in, in tickers uh, and stock price, uh, handling very large volumes very, very quickly, 
Um, this same kind of requirement uh, is what we see in industrial analytics applications. So this is, is nothing new to us. This is just an application uh, of this technology to, to this problem domain. The other piece here is, is you not only need an internal data model to efficiently handle changes and just render the, the changes on the screen, excuse me, render the changes on the screen in milliseconds, but you also need high density visuals. Um, the, the types of visualizations that you need to provide here change based on uh, handling time series data, geospatial data, uh, and very large data sets. So the ability to, uh, you know, to be able to provide visualizations like scatter plots so I can easily see outliers, the ability to uh, provide tree maps that support hierarchies so you can have um, breakdowns that make sense to a user. They can see at a, at a very high level uh, what's happening. They can drill down uh, directly to areas that, that indicate that there's an issue. So again, this, this streaming data visualization is very, very important, and we're moving away from that query response of traditional BI or traditional data discovery and moving more to a continuous query monitoring for important changes uh, as they occur, to go back and do the further analysis to uh, data at rest, uh, and then to take action, the ability to, to make better decisions and to very quickly take action. Another key requirement is time series data. Again, much of the information that's coming from uh, sensor data and other sources of data uh, is time series data. Um, so to do time series data well for IoT, it's very different than traditional BI. Traditional BI looks at time in terms of buckets, days, weeks, months, years. With sensor data, time is continuous. Um, we're looking at, at it may be seconds, milliseconds, nanoseconds slices of time. Um, so you not only need a, an architecture that will support and visualize this, you also need uh, very efficient ways in which you can query time series data, in which you can cache time series data. So with DataWatch, we provide native support. The cache that we use provides native support for time series data. Uh, and again, it makes it very, very efficient and powerful for being able to um, uh, visualize and uh, slice through data. And speaking of slicing through data, you know, you need to be able to set specific time windows to, to look at. So it might be a, I want to look at everything that happened within the day. Uh, support different time slices. So within that, that time window, I want to look at a hundred different uh, pieces of information, different slices. Uh, as I drill down and explore and find anomalies, I need to do some resampling uh, of that, of those time slices. I want to do some playback uh, on time. I want to see in a very visual way what happened, maybe within this day or this week or this month or this year. Uh, so time series playback is an important part. With Data Watch, you have complete situational awareness. You can see exactly what's happening as it happens because we can uh, directly visualize data in motion. That's streaming data. We're caching information, so you can see that uh, intraday information. And then you can go back and do deeper uh, exploration by directly querying uh, historic data. And again, it's taking a very uh, smart and intelligent approach as to which information to cache and the types of queries that you're going back to, uh, to the data set to ask, so that the performance from, a, from an analyst perspective they need to have uh, outstanding performance as they explore this data in a very visual way. So another key requirement uh, for IoT is around predictive and advanced analytics. Um, this is something that, that we see over and over again, and if, you're not, um, if you've not made investments uh, around predictive and advanced analytics, I can assure you that, that, that you will. Um, some of the, uh, this is not new, uh, predictive analytics have been around for some time. What is new is the, the, the large user community around R, open source R, and Python. Um, and we've taken the approach that uh, we connect directly to RServe and Pyro servers. And so you can pull direct information directly from these servers 
You can also do transforms of data. So as you pull data into DataWatch, you can do transforms using R and Python. So you can leverage the existing uh, talent that you have around these technologies. Um, you can leverage the large community uh, of, of predictive models that are available uh, for these technologies. Uh, and there's many, many use cases in, in IoT uh, for predictive and advanced analytics, uh, from predictive maintenance, which is probably the largest uh, that we see, uh, smart logistics, being very intelligent about how you route things based on different conditions. Um, let me give you, I'll give you two examples. Um, the first is, is around supply chain. Uh, one of our partners uh, is called Semantic Visions. They're, they're also an SAP HANA partner. And they use predictive analytics and visualization from DataWatch to understand supply chain disruptions. So they go out and, and they're pulling information from a wide variety of sources, including news, uh, news stories and other sources, to understand the impact um, uh, and disruption to the supply chain and make intelligent decisions uh, about uh, rerouting based on those, uh, on those disruptions and those potential disruptions. Uh, another example here is, uh, is the screenshot that, uh, that you see, and unfortunately with this technology uh, at BrightTalk, I can't, I can't show you a demo, uh, but, uh, but I want to throw a few screenshots in along the way to give you a sense of some of the work that's being done uh, with uh, data watch visualization um, in IoT. This is an example, this screenshot is an example of some work that we're doing with, uh, with a partner called Insight and the University of Montana. Uh, where they are using our technology to understand traumatic brain injury and seizures. And they're looking at uh, waveform models uh, to find predictive indicators to, uh, to seizures. Uh, so this waveform information is, is based on, on EEGs, so they're doing brain scans. Uh, they record and analyze uh, those EEG information uh, they can do that in real time using streaming technologies, uh, in this case, IBM Streams. And again, the whole idea here is, is to be able to take real-time uh, information from the intensive care unit on a patient. So they may be doing brain scans on a patient. Go back and look at um, the hundreds of thousands of, of hours of time series data um, that have gone through predictive models and look for uh, indicators and patterns that would uh, help you identify potential seizures. So some very, very important work being done. That, that's a, a very interesting example of, uh, of using complex data, uh, visualization, and, uh, and predictive and advanced analytics. Another requirement for IoT is uh, the ability to handle complex file formats. So sensor data, machine data, other information, it often comes in, in, in a wide variety of different formats. Uh, many times you're going to need to transform this information, to clean it, to, to enrich it, to prepare that data, and to get it ready, get it ready for analysis. So with DataWatch, uh, we provide a whole data preparation solution uh, that's really focused on uh, this data preparation stage, uh, and it provides over 80 different functions uh, for uh, transforming and getting data ready for visualization. Um, the sensor data and other uh, data, um, in most cases, has no metadata associated with it. So we also need to be very flexible with your ability to handle this data and to visualize this data. The, uh, the example that I gave you in, in, in the last slide, uh, the work that's being done on traumatic brain injury and seizures, um, they are... Um, they have information that's both coming from streaming sources, from IBM Streams, uh, as well as the historic data, all of this hundreds of thousands of hours of, of EEG waveforms that's being stored in a Mongo uh, database. Uh, it's being stored in JSON arrays, um, and they needed the ability to uh, not only visualize uh, this information uh, from a historic perspective, but also visualize it from a real-time perspective. So again, the ability to handle a wide variety of, of, of different types of, uh, of data. Um, log files, uh, machine, uh, machine data comes in a wide variety of semi-structured formats. You need to be able to extract the right information uh, and push that through for, uh, for visualization. 
So this is not something to be overlooked because, uh, because it is definitely part of the, one of the challenges to organizations as they start to embrace uh, the Internet of Things. Another requirement, uh, again, the two, two of the most prevalent things that we see in, in IoT deployments uh, are time series data and geospatial or location-based data. Um, so you need to be able to, to handle that information. You need to be able to, uh, to provide uh, mapping capabilities. Uh, and you need, with DataWatch, we've got the unique ability to be able to do real-time plotting uh, on a geo map or custom SVG file. So if you want to, uh, if you want to do something like um, uh, from a logistics perspective, I want to know exactly where uh, our trucks are. I want to understand inventory. I want to plot that in real time. I want to see changes in real time uh, to be able to drill down to uh, to a street level. We provide that capabilities. Um, another, and you can, because we have that unique time series capability as well, all of that is available through uh, these visualizations so you can do things like time series playback. So you can understand uh, what some of these impacts were and you can see what happened to better understand root cause and take action going forward. Um, I'm going to give you two examples here of, uh, of people that we're working with. One is, uh, is Capital Malls. They, they, are, they run 104 malls in Asia. And what they're doing is, is they're doing uh, location analytics to understand real-time traffic patterns in their malls. So, you know, they've got, their approach is, let's take an SVG file, um, let's look at the floor plan of, of these malls, let's uh, understand and assess the traffic flow through the mall. They can, uh, they're looking at doing things like targeted ads uh, based on their loyalty card and loyal users. Um, customer service, how do I put the right people in the right place uh, to handle this? Uh, how do we optimize uh, traffic flow going forward as we construct new malls? How do we optimize that space? Um, and this is, gets me to another story, which is a, a retailer that's using Data Watch to build planograms. So they, you know, it's an actual representation of what's on the store shelves. So they can maximize their sales by product placement. So in this planogram, you know, you're seeing the, the actual uh, inventory and turnover um, as it's represented in the planogram so they can understand what's moving and why, and they can also understand, uh, again, in real time, what the effect of, of things like uh, price promotions are having uh, on different products and different placement. So again, geospatial and location is, uh, is, is really important. Uh, a couple other the screenshots here I put, one is around healthcare. This is uh, another project we're, uh, we're working with, uh, Excel Medical. Um, they provide connectivity to patient monitoring systems. Um, and you can take this information, you can aggregate this information up, you can uh, provide a hospital with a bird's eye view of all the different patients in the ICU. You can triage them uh, based on real-time information, and you can drill down to specific patients. Um, so again, this is uh, using uh, location-based analytics uh, to, uh, to effectively manage not only personnel, but also some of the uh, equipment that they have in an ICU. Uh, as this equipment moves around uh, large hospitals, you need to, to be very uh, efficient uh, at utilizing that equipment. So being able to see exactly where it is and where it needs to be in real time uh, is, is very important. So those are the six requirements, um, and I've, I, I hope that you have a better understanding that, uh, that these things are essential for Internet of Things deployments, particularly around industrial analytics. Um, the, the thing that I want to leave you with here is that uh, traditional approaches, traditional tools, traditional BI, uh, it's not going to work. Uh, you're not going to get the most out of your uh, IoT initiative. It's really a, a new approach is required. You need to be thinking about a visual data discovery, streaming information in real time. You need to be thinking about uh, how time series data is different and the types of, of analytics and visualization that you'll be doing is very different and having infrastructure to support that. Um, definitely need to be embracing predictive and advanced analytics. Um, this is at the heart of, uh, of moving 
from what Gartner calls uh, descriptive to more uh, prescriptive analytics and trying to automate uh, and provide machine learning to help us along the way. Uh, you need to focus on the mundane, complex file formats and how do I get access to the information that's in uh, multi-structure. And finally, real-time and geospatial, uh, real-time geospatial and location analytics, which uh, we see in just about every IoT deployment. So I hope this has given you some perspective. Um, I'm going to leave you with a, the final thought from Gartner, which is, you know, this really represents the next wave of business transformation. Industrial analytics and the Internet of Things is going to have a transformative impact um, to those organizations that are uh, embrace it and uh, are thinking about how best to harness this information and, and take advantage of, of best practices and new technologies to be able to do that. So I'm going to uh, move to the Q&A section. I see that we have some questions here, which is great. Again, I encourage uh, all of you to uh, ask your questions in the question box. Um, while I go through uh, some of the q and I'm going to encourage you to, to do a few things uh, as next steps. One, you can try DataWatch Desktop. Uh, we offer a free trial. Uh, this, this, uh, it's easy to download. You can get running uh, right away, and you can connect directly to uh, Data in Motion in, in any other data source uh, that you have. So you can begin to experience the power of next generation analytics um, if you have an implementation um, that you'd like us to, to support you on, by all means, reach out. We'd love to, love to hear from you. If you're in the learning mode, um, I put two links here to, uh, to two of our partners um, that you can learn more about uh, data in motion, visualizing data in motion, and how it applies to uh, operational intelligence. Um, there's a, a, a webcast that I did with Informatica, uh, the link that you'll find here, also uh, with IBM. Um, both Informatica and IBM are, are uh, big partners of DataWatch um, and also provide uh, all of that real-time infrastructure that is required for effective IoT. So with that, I'm going to uh, answer a few questions here. Uh, first question is, uh, do, you, do you connect to Pi Historian Server? Um, great question. So I, I, I mentioned before um, that in operational technology, on shop floors, uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in other uh, industries, there have been sensors and, and operational technology uh, available for years and years and years. Uh, Pi Historian is, is one of those servers that collects this information. Um, what's changing? So yes, we do support uh, direct connectivity to a Pi Historian. More importantly, um, we work with uh, OSI software to, uh, we've got a real-time connector. So as information uh, is coming off and collected by uh, OSI Soft, we can directly visualize that information and we don't need to wait for it to go uh, into a repository and do a query. So you get all the benefits that I mentioned earlier about uh, streaming data visualization. Um, um, okay, next question. Um, can you describe a, a real-world example of a utility using streaming data and visualization? Um, I can give you an example of, of one that's, uh, that's very close to us here. Um, it's a hydro example uh, where they are uh, collecting all kinds of information uh, about um, uh, the energy as it's being produced and looking at those, uh, the turbines and sensor information from those turbines. Uh, and being able to make intelligent decisions uh, around uh, uh, predictive and preventative maintenance. Uh, it's, it's really the example that I talked about earlier, the Gartner pointed out about uh, predictive maintenance. Uh, how do you find out earlier through sensors um, information that, that is very important? And, and, but more importantly, how do you make intelligent decisions about when to bring it down, when to do that maintenance? Uh, because you need not only the technical information that something is wrong, but you need uh, the, the business intelligence, the business understanding to, to, to say, you know, when is the right time to bring this down and to do that maintenance. So you need to look at, uh, you know, the cost of energy. You need to, you need to look at uh, the time it takes to, uh, to, to, to do that maintenance. Um, so all of these things um, uh, play a role. The other piece of that, so there's the back-end uh, energy generation, 
on the front end side, it's, it's about uh, looking at uh, smart meter information uh, and visualizing that and providing customers with better information uh, and smarter information about their own uh, use of energy. So, you know, again, providing that information in real time, both from an internal perspective and from a customer perspective, is something that's being done, done today. Um, again, if you've got questions, please feel free to ask them in the, the Q&A box. Uh, a question here, how is Data Watch different uh, from, in this case, the Tableau for, uh, for the Internet of Things? You know, I'll go back to, uh, you know, Tableau is, is a great tool for data discovery. There's a lot of solutions out there for data discovery. What makes Data Watch very unique, I go back to the, uh, to the six, uh, to the six areas, uh, and I'll, I'll bring this back up as a, uh, as a reminder. What makes Data Watch unique is, is not only are we a visual data discovery solution, uh, but for these other requirements, the ability to, to visualize directly data in motion. So the faster you can identify issues, the faster you can resolve them, and the greater impact that you can have. Uh, our unique capabilities with time series data, uh, the ability to support predictive and advanced analytics in a, in a variety of different fashions. Complex file formats. Uh, there are things that DataWatch can do in preparing data and extracting and transforming data that no other vendor can do. And finally, the real-time geospatial and location analytics, uh, no other vendor provides that, that capability. Again, it goes back to uh, our ability to support uh, and visualize in real-time data in motion. So these are some of the, uh, some of the differences. And again, um, it's not that you need to throw out uh, your existing investments. You need to augment um, those investments with, with solutions like DataWatch that are purpose-built uh, for these types of, of, of applications and deployments. So again, I, I very much encourage you to, uh, to take a look at the, um, at the DataWatch desktop trial and, and try this for yourself. Um, I don't see any more questions, so with that, I'd like to thank all of you very much for participating in today's event. Um, we look forward to hearing from you, and we look forward to hearing about some of the, the interesting and innovative things that you are doing around the Internet of Things and discuss how we can help you. Thank you very much.